Hey there, welcome back to the Noctis on YouTube. Five people aboard Ocean Gate's Titan submersible tragically lost their lives when the vessel imploded in June. The submersible was embarking on an expedition to the Titanic's wreckage, a site resting nearly 13,000 feet beneath the ocean's surface. Alas, the Titan lost communication with its supporting vessel just an hour and 45 minutes into the voyage. Officials from the U.S. Coast Guard have indicated that the submersible likely experienced a catastrophic loss of the pressure chamber. Good afternoon. Over the past week... In the weeks following the incident, multiple reports emerged detailing substantial worries that had encircled the submarine much earlier before its tragic final voyage, many of which the passengers might have been oblivious to. Here are the reasons why we now know going on the Titan sub was a very bad idea. Concerns about Titan's construction. OceanGate, the company owning the submersible, has been repeatedly warned about the potential for the vessel to be crushed by deep sea pressure as early as five years ago. Rob McCallum, who provided consulting services for OceanGate in 2009, has been voicing safety concerns to its CEO, Stockton Rush, since 2018. McCallum warned OceanGate's CEO and Titan submersible captain Rush about the use of carbon fiber for the submersible. McCallum noted his close familiarity with the Titan submersible. He had spent time with Rush and his team in the warehouse overseeing Titan's construction. Based on his experience and observations, he warned Rush about three aspects concerning Titan. First, Titan uses materials unsuitable for deep sea vessels. They use a unique carbon fiber that no one else would use. The second is their arrogant attitude towards equipment, evidenced by their use of a video game controller for operational purposes in the submersible. This unconventional choice has been widely reported in the media. The third point that Rob McCallum was worried about was the culture and daily operational attitude. In the maritime industry, safety is the primary theme of daily operations. It's not just about what's under the sea. The attitude of anyone posing a security risk will not only be silenced, but corrective actions will also be taken to mitigate the risks posed. Safety allegations and legal battles. In January 2018, Ocean Gate's Director of Maritime Operations, Lockridge, was fired after leaking safety issues about the Titanic tourist submarine named Titan. Lockridge, a Scottish submarine captain and diver, started working for Ocean Gate in May 2015 as an independent contractor and was later promoted to the role of director. According to the complaint, the company could be placing passengers in extreme danger on an experimental submarine. He later reported these safety issues to the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. He voiced his concerns over the strength of Titan's bow and leaked that the submarine did not go through standard safety trials. In a lawsuit filed in Washington State five years ago, OceanGate accused Lockridge of violating a confidentiality agreement by leaking proprietary and confidential information. The document said, Lockridge first expressed concerns verbally about safety and quality control issues related to Titan to OceanGate's executive management. This verbal communication was ignored. In his counterclaim, Lockridge expressed concerns about Titan's safety, especially OceanGate's refusal to conduct critical and non-destructive testing of the experimental hull design. He warned that passengers on Titan could be at risk as the submarine reaches extreme depths. According to Lockridge, the viewport at the front of Titan was designed to withstand pressure up to a depth of 1,300 meters, but Ocean Gate planned to take passengers to a depth of about 4,000 meters. The document continued. Ocean Gate was reluctant to pay a manufacturer to build a viewport suitable for a depth of 4,000 meters. As for Titanic, it lies at the bottom of the sea at a depth of about 3,800 meters. Lockridge also highly advised OceanGate to use a classification agent like the American Bureau of Shipping to inspect and certify Titan. The counterclaim read, Rather than addressing his concerns or undergoing corrective action to improve and ensure the safety of the still experimental Titan, or using a standard classification body to inspect Titan, OceanGate did just the opposite. They promptly fired Lockridge. Titan Submersible Success Rate Shocking facts related to the Titan submersible have resurfaced, this time from a prospective passenger who decided not to participate in the expedition. They revealed that the submersible, owned by Ocean Gates, only reached the depth of the Titanic wreckage 13 times out of 90 dives. 
As reported by Insider, this fact was gleaned from a point on a form that prospective passengers must sign. With this record, it means the Titan only had a 14% success rate on expeditions to the Titanic wreckage. OceanGate stated that they had completed more than 14 expeditions and 200 dives in the Pacific, Atlantic, and Gulf of Mexico using two submarines, according to archives on their website, while their first successful dive to the Titanic was in 2021. Failed Diving Test A former Titan passenger, Brian Weed, told Insider that the submarine failed a diving test in 2021 because its thrusters stopped working. It was trapped underwater for more than two hours and never reached a depth of 100 feet. Boeing Aircraft Parts Travel Weekly's editor-in-chief Arnie Weissman claims Rush said Titan was using secondhand items. The carbon fiber material for the hull is reportedly sourced from Boeing. This Boeing material was cheap and had already exceeded its aircraft service life. Weissman wrote, he got the carbon fiber used to make Titan at a major discount from Boeing because it had already passed its service life for use in airplanes. Weissman was actually a prospective passenger on Titan last May. However, the journey was ultimately canceled due to weather conditions. Tests on the submarine at the Deep Ocean Test Facility, part of the U.S. Naval Academy, also found that its carbon fiber hull showed signs of cyclic fatigue at lower depths, according to GeekWire. OceanGate then had to cancel its plans for dives to the Titanic in 2018, 2019, and 2020, the report said. Hellish Conditions In August 2021, a passenger named Arthur Loibel reported parts falling off and the mission being delayed by five hours due to electrical problems. Loibel speculated that this could be the cause of the Titan's disappearance. Loibel stated that he had paid 100,000 euros for the adventure and booked it through a British company that organizes specialized safaris. As for the conditions inside the vessel, Loibel described them as extremely uncomfortable. You need strong nerves, you mustn't be claustrophobic, and you have to be able to sit cross-legged for 10 hours, he added. He further painted a daunting picture of the submarine's interior, saying, It must be hell down there. There's only a 2.5-meter space, it's 4 degrees, and there are no seats or toilets. Heard cracking sound. Carl Stanley, a submersible expert and a friend of Stockton Rush, told News Nation that he heard a cracking sound when he boarded the sub in April 2019 and sent an email to Rush expressing his concerns. Um, there's no doubt in my mind that it was the carbon fiber tube that was the mechanical part that failed. And that's what you believe you heard essentially cracking? Correct. Stanley said he heard the cracking sound as the submersible descended to a depth of 12,000 feet. He stated that the sound got louder as the submersible went deeper, and he worried that the submersible might collapse. Stanley sent an email to Rush the next day to warn him about his concerns. He told Rush that he believed the submersible had structural defects, and he urged Rush not to proceed with the plans to take tourists to the Titanic. Rush did not respond to Stanley's email, and he went ahead with his plans to take tourists to the Titanic. In 2023, the submersible imploded while descending to the Titanic, killing five people. At this time, it's unknown whether the defect Stanley heard in 2019 was the cause of the explosion. However, Stanley's concerns about the submersible indicate that there were potential unknown hazards with the submersible. The Liability Waiver OceanGate, as the operator of a tourist submersible designed to dive 4,000 meters below the sea's surface, required its customers to sign liability waivers before boarding the 21-foot vessel. These waivers vividly detailed the potential risks, including the possibility of death, emotional distress, or physical harm. The company's liability waiver came under scrutiny when CBS News correspondent David Pogue, who embarked on the sub last year, pointed out that the document alludes to the risk of death at least three times and refers to other potential dangers. The waiver also painted a concerning picture of the vessel itself, underscoring some of the issues with the sub that experts had cautioned about in the years leading up to its ill-fated journey. The document stated, This operation will be conducted inside an experimental submersible vessel that has not been approved or certified by any regulatory body and may be constructed of materials that have not been widely used in human-occupied submersibles. Moreover, Passengers also relinquished the right to take legal action for personal injury, property damage, or any other loss that they incurred on the trip. That wraps up today's video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more awesome videos. Catch you in the next one.